Hyperkalemia refers to a higher than normal level of potassium in the blood and it's usually detected through a blood test. It is a potentially life-threatening emergency that can interrupt the heartbeat, causing it to stop without warning, can affect patients in either hospital or community settings. Over a three-year period, the National Reporting and Learning System received 35 reports of patients suffering cardiac arrest whilst hyperkalemic. Staff reporting these incidents expressed concerns that colleagues were not always aware of the need for urgent action when hyperkalemia is identified or suspected. How the body responds to hyperkalemia is unpredictable. Irregular heartbeat and cardiac arrest can occur at any time and without warning. It is therefore vital that all healthcare staff understand clinical assessment is time critical and that any required treatment must begin as quickly as possible. Even if the patient seems well, don't presume they are not at risk. The first sign of hyperkalemia may be cardiac arrest. The urgency of assessment and frequency of potassium monitoring will depend on individual circumstances, and this may be particularly relevant to GPs and community staff. Remember, your swift action really does matter. Early identification provides an opportunity to intervene and prevent further increases in potassium levels. As soon as hyperkalemia is identified, always seek urgent medical advice about the patient's ongoing management. If the patient is in the community, local guidance will dictate when the patient should be sent into hospital for immediate assessment and treatment. As hyperkalemia can be life-threatening, it is essential you know exactly what your organisation expects you to do. The level of assessment, treatment and monitoring will depend on the patient's presentation and clinical history. Your local hyperkalemia policy document will provide the guidance you need and should reflect the latest national advice, so be sure you know exactly where it is located and are familiar with the content. Treatment decisions rely on a review of current and previous potassium results and a 12-lead ECG. It will help if you have them to hand as soon as you've called for help. Remember to immediately stop any intravenous infusions containing potassium and ensure prompt review of the patient's medication so that drugs known to increase potassium levels can be identified and a decision made whether to continue. Local guidance for treating hyperkalemia helps doctors decide on options for investigation, treatment and monitoring and ensures all staff are aware of the equipment and medication that may be needed. Some hospitals make this easier by providing special hyperkalemia packs or boxes. While general practices will not need hyperkalemia treatment protocols or kits, they need to ensure they take the correct urgent action when receiving blood test results that indicate hyperkalemia. During and after treatment, it is essential to regularly monitor the patient's potassium level. Even if the patient has initially responded well, hyperkalemia can recur after the effects of treatment have worn off. As the treatment for hyperkalemia involves giving glucose and insulin, low blood sugar, known as hyperglycemia, can be a serious complication. So it is also very important to regularly monitor and act on the patient's blood sugar levels. Remember, hyperkalemia is a potentially life-threatening emergency, which can be corrected with treatment, but it requires urgent medical review, clinically effective treatment and ongoing monitoring. And always remember that your swift and efficient action can save lives.